Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. My name is Colin Peartree. I'm the team coordinator for the ANA Avatar X Prize, and you are tuned into our fourth edition of the Meet the Team series, a webinar interview series. And today we're meeting with Avatar Quest, who's a team from San Jose, California. I'm also joined by my colleague Jackie Mori, who is the technical advisor for the Avatar X Prize. And uh, just in a moment, we're going to introduce you to four members of Team Avatar Quest. Before we get started, I want to review a few things about the webinar. You are joined in and you are muted for this call and you're off of video, but you can interact with us through the chat function at the bottom of the screen on your menu bar in Zoom. And we also invite you throughout the call to submit questions for XPRIZE and especially for Team Avatar Quest. And we'll be viewing that, uh, that Q&A section uh, throughout the call and we'll be answering your questions live. So please come with questions and feel free to ask away. Avatar Quest is one of 77 qualified teams in the Avatar X Prize. As you all know, we have a very wide global spread, which is very exciting to know that uh, in a competition that's set to uh, connect people all around the world, it's important to have competitors from all around the world. So. Avatar Quest being one of 27 teams in the United States, but one of 77 from 19 different countries around the world. We are delighted to have them. Uh, They're also a returning XPRIZE competitor. So they have some experience being in our competitions and it's always a pleasure to have returning competitors who are here to help make the world a better place. So with that, I wanna introduce Danny Kim, who is the, uh, the team coordinator for Avatar Quest who's going to make introductions to the rest of the team. Thanks, Colin. Good morning, Danny. <clears throat> morning, or afternoon, or evening, depending on where. So uh, again, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, I, it's uh, XPRIZE for us uh, is, is, is an organization and a competition that's dear to, to our hearts. Um, we, uh, as a team or as, a, as an organization um, that, that partners with uh, junior high and high school kids uh, to create a team. We did the, our first kind of trial run uh, of, of this three years ago, three plus years ago with, uh, with, uh, with the Ocean Discovery X Prize. And uh, out of that, we were the youngest team uh, in X Prize history to actually win. We won the uh, NOAA bonus prize. And uh, obviously after that, the, the amount of interest from students uh, was off the charts. And it's not just to, hey, let's get, let's get on a team to win. It was the, the, the collaboration and the camaraderie and the learning process that happened over those three years. And so we saw this as a great education opportunity to inspire uh, young people to actually get together and compete. Um, now I'm going to introduce our avatar team um, in, in a second and I'll, I'll kick it off. But, uh, but I wanted to kind of give the framework of, of what we are trying to do here. It's not just uh, one competition. We see the XPRIZE as an organization that, uh, uh, that we've kind of loosely partnered with because we are looking at, and we actually have another uh, XPRIZE team uh, doing the Rainforest uh, XPRIZE. Uh, and may even sign up for another one because um, uh, the interest, not just from any one school, but from a variety of schools from around the world uh, has, has always already started coming up. And our first test of this, the, the resilience of this team really came when obviously when we were hit by uh, all the lockdowns and, and what, what we created because we knew this would be an international team or, or a team of, of kids collaborating um, we actually created an infrastructure, an online infrastructure using um, online tools and whatnot for the kids to continue to collaborate and, and connect. And that has served us really well because for the last four to six months, uh, the kids have been meeting online virtually constantly. Actually, the only complaints I've had from parents is that they're meeting too much. Um, and so can you please okay. not have two hour meetings uh, every Saturday afternoon? Um, and then uh, follow on with another two-hour meeting on Sunday. So it's, um, it's a good problem to have, but it's, it, it goes to the zealousness and, the, and the, the initiative that the students have had in, 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 in putting their energies towards solving a problem that truly is audacious enough. And uh, I think that's one thing that uh, we see a lot of things missing in some of the education is, is we're not giving kids enough of a challenge. And what XPRIZE does is gives the kids a challenge that is on a global scale, um, you know, near 
impossible or, or doesn't have a ready solution yet. And so that is what's really driving the kids uh, and the momentum around that. So what I'll do is I'll pass the baton over to um, Steven Huber. He's our, he's our lead mentor um, uh, and, and uh, he's actually uh, our, our R&D person who supports the kids. Um, so we are, we are the quote unquote adults, so sometimes we do feel like children at times, but we are the supposed adults in this uh, arena. But, but we have in our avatar team, we have 24 uh, students. And, uh, and one of the other thing I will mention is when we opened this up in one school for, for an application, we had over 120 applicants for 12 slots. Um, and one of the things that I would joke, uh, uh, you know, you know it, it, with the parents and, and others, you know, trying to get, get set expectations is uh, it was actually easier to get into Harvard than actually to get into this XPRIZE team. <laughs> and the ad application and interview process was was phenomenally competitive, which again uh, came back to the to the real interest that there has there's been on on the on this uh, X Prize itself. So, what I want to do is pass this over to uh, Stephen Huber, who leads our R and D and is our our uh, team uh, mentor, uh, to kind of describe the makeup of the team, and then he'll introduce the student uh, themselves. Thanks, Danny. Hey everybody. Um, so my name is Stephen Huber. I'm the technical lead for our XPRIZE teams and also the director of research and development at uh, Quest and Valley Christian Schools. Um, yeah, as, as Danny described, you know, we, and, and as you're probably well aware, our team is uh, primarily made up of, of high school students. Um, in our previous XPRIZE, we actually, um, uh, we we even had junior high students that that were that followed up all through the Ocean Discovery X Prize, um, and now are are graduating. So um, Mihir, who's on this call, that when when he speaks, he'll he joined our team, I believe, as a freshman, and uh, and now he just he just graduated this year and is headed off to college. Um, but uh, yeah, our our team is 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 made up and primarily led by by our students. Um, as mentors, we're, we're there to support them wherever needed. And we just have a few different mentors on the team. Um, uh, Vanessa Martinez and obviously Danny Kim leads our team. And I, and I, do, the, uh, uh, I do the technical side. And we also have a project manager, uh, a fan that, that uh, helps out with the team as well and leads a lot of the, the student, directs a lot of the student activities just to, to make sure if we keep them focused and on the right track. Um, and, and then in addition to that, we have some occasional contractors that we use to help out with specific uh, technical aspects that we're not equipped to deal with at the, at the time. But, um, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty impressive how our, our students really can take the lead on these things. I mean, um, you know, the, the XPRIZE isn't a simple task. None of the XPRIZEs are easy, which is why they offer a you know, a large reward for those teams that can, that can actually accomplish the challenges. Um, but uh, the nice thing about dealing with students uh, is that, you know, a lot of the limitations that we create for ourselves. Uh, or they, they do realize them, but they, 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 uh, they have a greater imagination than typically most adults have. So, so they'll, uh, so they'll rise to the challenge and just they, you know, nothing's impossible. And so, um, so with that, I mean, we have two students on today, uh, Jennifer Song and Mihir. Uh, Jennifer is, is new to our XPRIZE team um, in terms of this was her first XPRIZE, whereas um, Mihir was, was a, the student team lead for the Ocean Discovery XPRIZE. And as Danny said, we actually, end up winning the uh, NOAA, NOAA bonus prize uh, for that, which, um, you know, was a huge, uh, which a huge accomplishment, but also very uh, spurned on a lot of additional activities and, and interest and, and um, with XPRIZE. So um, I, I'm, I'm sure that you have questions for them. I'll let you ask them, them those questions and, and um, we appreciate the opportunity to be here and speak to all of you. Wonderful. Yeah, thank you, Stephen and Danny. Of course, thanks for that introduction. There was a lot to unpack in both of uh, your introductions. So we're excited to hear more about the team and share that with uh, the viewers, uh, both live and post. Uh, but before we go any further on that, I would love to introduce uh, the students who are on the call, the drivers of the team. And so Jennifer, I'd love to hear from you first. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself, 
um, your role on the team and, and uh, what the XPRIZE means to you, just so you can introduce yourself. Yeah, so I'm Jennifer Song. I am one of the project managers for um, the vision systems where we basically deal with um, what the avatar can see and then um, what the recipient or the operator sees as well. And um, I guess I've always had an interest just in science and engineering. So joining this team was a opportunity for me to really be able to use my hands and create something that um, came from inside of me. And I find it interesting because um, there are so many students with the same interests as me and um, we can all work together to make this um, avatar that was once thought to be impossible to make really come true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really great to hear. You know, one of the things that you just mentioned is the, you know, that, that idea of collaboration. So getting to meet students with similar interests and work together, bring something that you think and that's inside of you and bring that to life using your own hands. And that's really exciting for, for you to have that opportunity, especially early on, uh, just through school and having this program that you were, uh, that you were able to get into. Um, we'll touch on this a little later, but I understand that you were uh, one of the applicants and that was a little bit of a, uh, maybe a stressful uh, procedure to get actually on the team. So I'd love to hear more about that soon. But Mahir also, who is on the call, I want to introduce you. Uh, say hello to the crowd. Uh, who are you and what do you do on the team? Thank you. Hi, my name is Mihir. I am uh, one of the systems managers on systems and systems engineering managers on the avatar team. And I'm also involved uh, as the leader of our sister team, the Rainforest X Price team. So my primary role is in management and I was also on the previous X Price team in an engineering role. And so a lot of the people who are on the previous X Price team uh, kind of uh, took on management positions in these two new teams, which uh, our school is taking part in. Um, something which I found interesting about this project is that we're not really just one isolated team. We're closely partnered with the Rainforest team. And so there's tremendous transfer of ideas between our two projects, um, more so than I think between most other XPRIZE teams, because generally um, two teams in different XPRIZES don't interact um, so much that they even share the same facilities and have some of the same uh, team members on both teams or, or at least team members that contribute um, intellectual um, ideas to each team. So that was, I think, an interesting um, differentiator between our team and um, potentially other teams or potentially even uh, something that's new in this project compared to our previous Ocean Discovery X Prize project. Yeah, that is really interesting. So what I'm learning now is that there's a really interesting team dynamic around all of the quests competition or sorry the competing teams so on one hand you have very distinct teams that are working together but you're an example me here of some overlap between each team so what's the dynamic and jennifer i'd love to hear from you too what is the dynamic of all the students working on separate competitions is it pretty much you know you're on that team and you're working on this project or do you see some overlap between some of the work that you do and crossing paths with other students so a lot of the team leaders who were potentially on the previous X Prize or who have more experience have been kind of um, interacting with each other across teams and sharing ideas on how to um, best designs, best management practices, um, uh, things like that. Uh, like I, I personally have been working with the team leader of the avatar team to determine um, how we're going to plan the avatar project um, despite the fact that my primary role is with the Rainforest team um, and I'm in a uh, uh, primarily like a systems engineering role in Avatar. And so there's kind of like this um, intellectual discourse in terms of common problems that the teams each face. Like for instance, both teams in Rainforest and Avatar have to develop um, sensor systems. In Avatar, it will be a haptic sensor system, whereas in Rainforest, it would be kind of like an environmental temperature, humidity, um, type of sensor system. But in both of these cases, there's a need for um, sensors and a general understanding of how to design uh, sensing and actuating systems. So there's kind of 
that shared knowledge base, which we've been learning together and applying to our own specific problems. Very cool. Thank you, Mihir. Jennifer, what's your experience been like uh, working in the vision system uh, part of the team? And have you seen some similar overlap, uh, kind of what Mihir was just talking about? Um, yeah, definitely. So I'm more of, I work more with like um, the smaller subsystems. So I'm mm -hmm. more like specific there, but I have definitely seen the two teams come together and share different ideas just because um, it's kind of similar. Like the two competitions are pretty similar in terms of um, one, one is kind of like um, a drone and the other one is an avatar, um, both remote um, sensing. So um, it's interesting to be able to share the different ideas as um, two different teams and come together um, and see the different types of technology that is being used. I have a question, Jennifer. What are, what's your current thinking on the avatar vision system? Um, what, are, what do you think you're going to be using and um, how, how critical is it for the operator to be able to have that vision of through the robotic avatar? Yeah, so currently we are using a ZED stereoscopic camera. So basically the reason we're using that is because it can automatically generate like a spatial map with relative distances. So this is um, both useful in terms of like the operator being able to see where everything actually is. And also um, if we want to do any um, coding in order to be able to have an actual map of um, the objects so that the avatar can move around and also has like an IMU um, temperature humidity sensors and we can live stream it on a um, IP network. So that is what we are using in terms of camera on top of the avatar. And then um, for the operator to be able to actually see this in real time and before we immerse in the experience, we're using a HTC Vive, um, so the VR headset. And that also helps the avatar to actually become immersed in the experience and see what the avatar would actually be seeing while it is moving in real time. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So Jennifer, you're one of, you're a project manager of one of five, I believe you said subsystems. Can you tell us about the other four and if you were involved in them at all, or are you really just specifically in vision? Um, and how did you come up with that, that subsystem um, system. <laughs> <laughs> so our team is mainly split, like you said, into the five subsystems. So the, um, it's split into control, sound, um, vision, mobility, and then haptics. And there are system engineers that are in charge of the entire team. So then they oversee all of the five subsystems and make sure each is on task and can actually integrate together at the end. Um, and then we have project managers, which are in charge of each specific subsystem. So then students in, in these systems work together. Um, and although they meet across the entire team to throw ideas around and calls, um, we also work in the subsystems to um, kind of specialize in either software, mechanical or electrical engineering, and then um, put all of these ideas together to present to the team um, overall and see how we can integrate all the different systems together. So is that, that uh, the classification or the designation of five subsystems, where does that, where do those categories come from? Are those student driven? Did you have that kind of set up beforehand? Tell us how that was born. Um, yeah, I think it was um, mostly student driven, although I'm not too sure about this part, but um, in the beginning, when we were first forming teams, um, the different students who are interested in different sections, whether it be like software electrical or just um, sound vision in general, um, we kind of had a poll to see where each student wanted to contribute most to, and then we split based on those decisions. And in terms of the five different subsystems, we kind of determined that based on um, like importance mm -hmm. of um, which yeah, just basically the components of the avatar that made most sense, and then we split it based on that. Gotcha. Yeah, it, I mean, it seems like it's a great way to structure the team. They have five different subsystems. You're able to to kind of cluster into smaller groups to work together on certain on certain focal points that you've identified, and then there are times when you come together as a full group 
And you even have some oversight as well, where there is a, a systems engineer who's overseeing the integration at a certain point. So it seems like a pretty savvy structure. Mihir, you're, a, you're one of those team leads that oversees all five, is that correct? Yeah. So at, from throughout this whole process, what's that been like, uh, managing the collaboration between those, those five subsystems? And how many people are on a full team? I'd, I'd be really interested to know um, how much wrangling you really have to do here. <laughs> yes, so there's about three to five people per subteam, although there's a lot of interaction across subteams, so it can sometimes feel like there's, um, like, like the lines between subteams are blurred um, a little bit because of the like interdependencies. Um, as far as managing the various subteams goes, um, we generally will have one point person who's responsible for giving um, kind of like status updates or who's um, maybe, maybe not like so much a leader, but kind of just a person who we're um, responsible, who's responsible for being the point of contact for that project. And so that kind of helps streamline the information flow across the team. Um, additionally, each team kind of has a little bit of um, their own autonomy. Like during our, we recently had a, um, we, a, a week where we were allowed to come into school and socially distance, but uh, still uh, work on our projects. And so many of the sub teams came and worked on their individual uh, projects during this, uh, during that week. And there was a lot of initiative and autonomy across each of the teams and identifying the parts which they needed and getting the tools they needed and putting together the prototypes which they uh, wanted to. And so as far as management, it's, um, uh, a lot of it has been managing communication across these teams and making sure that teams are setting reasonable goals for themselves and are and that they always have the resources that they need in order to accomplish their goals. Um, uh, but it hasn't been uh, like um, uh, wrangling people who are trying to resist wrangling. I, I haven't really been like um, getting that type of um, experience from the team. So that, that is, that's been kind of a fortunate thing. Um, I actually have one of our um, prototype parts here, which I'm gonna turn off my virtual background. Um, uh, sorry, so that, so I can show it. Okay, so. It looks good now. This, yeah. So this is, a prototype of a robotic arm with six degrees of freedom, which we're making. It's not finished yet. It's, it is very much a prototype. Um, this was actually um, the sub team, which is developing this is led by my brother, who is actually also on the team. Um, so he brought it home. So I have access to it to show it. Um, so yeah, this, these, a lot of the things which we're, um, developing a lot of the students are on our um, high school robotics teams and so a lot of the technology it kind of draws from the technology that's used in the uh, first robotics competition uh, which is the uh, most popular high school robotics competition so you can see there's like um, a lot of aluminum parts and some of these motors are uh, the same motors which they use in the first robotics competition robots and so the, that, that's kind of, um, I guess I'm kind of going off of the topic of sub teams here, but that's kind of one of the like inspirations as far as technology goes for our designs is the technology which our team members are um, familiar with through their um, extracurriculars. Great. Yeah. Yeah. And not to worry about going off topic where it's a free flowing conversation and it's, it totally fits into obviously what the work that you're doing uh, to create this robotic avatar system. So taking it one level higher to back to Steven, who I know you're the team mentor and you've kind of overseen all of these subsystems and the systems themselves. What do you, I mean, tell me about your perspective in helping guide these students. You know, Mihir said that there isn't too much pushback and hurting. So it seems like you, know, you may have a pretty, you know, free flowing, uh, position where you're really just guiding these students all going in the same direction. Can you say more? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I would say I, I ha maybe have a slightly different perspective than me here. Uh, no, no, I mean, in general, they are, they are, you know, they, 
they've really, uh, especially, you know, after our success with uh, Ocean Discovery, you know, I know that really uh, uh, encouraged and empowered them uh, through that, through that win. And, um, and so now, with, especially with these X prizes, uh, they've really taken the reins on this and, and, you know, it really led the charge in terms of the development and the R and D and uh, the prototyping. Um, so, uh, so as far as, yeah, wrangling and, and goes, I, I actually don't have to do too much wrangling of them. Um, they are very uh, self-governed. So they're the team leads like me here and there's uh, some others like Randy Tran or, or Jennifer, you know, they, they really, uh, uh, they, they schedule their own meetings. Um, they, uh, they uh, uh, set their own due dates, delivery dates and, and design reviews and all that uh, is done through them, uh, which is great because, uh, you know, uh, being the, uh, the technical lead on the X prize isn't my only responsibility with Quest or with the school. So, uh, so I, it frees me up a little bit to, to work on some other research and development projects that we have ongoing. But um, no, I mean, it, uh, I mean, what, what Mihir said is actually is, is, is correct. They, they really are leading the charge. We, we definitely, as mentors, um, speak into them at times and, and do our best to maintain focus. You know, there's, with any type of R&D effort, whether it's students or adults, there's always a uh, feature drift, you know, <laughs> so, you know, they start, you know, start at, um, talking about what, what if we put, you know, this type of, you know, this have these capabilities for the avatar or do this, you know, uh, I mean, you know, who knows what, if, if, you know, if, if we weren't there, maybe, maybe our avatar would have rockets. I don't know at this point, but <laughs> no, but uh, they, they uh, sometimes you just have to pull it back and be like, remember what, we, we define the objectives of the X prize. We define the uh, design requirements. Let's uh, let's stay in the, in those requirements. Yeah. Um, and so, so uh, j that's pretty much the extent of our wrangling um, is just to maintain focus on the core objectives of the avatar X prize. So I have a question for, for you and for Danny, um, Stephen, in terms of like, how many students are in your um, in your program, and uh, I, I would like to talk a little bit more about how you got the kids through the process of becoming a team member or even a, a, a subsystem project manager. Um, it seems like there's a lot of thought that goes into this to, to make a successful team that can actually uh, compete with the big boys and girls in the X Prize competition. So it's pretty impressive. Uh, what you've done. And I'd like to know a little bit more about the process of how students are, are um, accepted into the teams. Sure. Um, I'll, I'll let Danny speak to the, the accept the uh, application process. Um, I'll say for our team teams right now, um, if I'm right now looking at our, our uh, collaboration software that we use, which is uh, Microsoft Teams, and it says we have uh, 24 members and guests, but that includes a few, um, a few, followers and and other other um, mentors so that's not totally accurate and I'll, exp I'll let Danny explain what a follower is and why we decide to go that route but um, we're roughly at around 20 per team per X prize team but go ahead Danny you can explain the process yeah as I as I explained earlier the the interest uh, was extremely high we we started with the, the one school um, that uh, we did the original uh, ocean discovery X prize um, uh, the school has about uh, six or seven hundred high school, about three or four hundred junior high students. So we took from that pool uh, initially, and and again the application pool, even to get one hundred and twenty applications, uh, was was extremely high because um, you had to actually write a full essay, um, answer questions, get teacher recommendations. So the process of even applying. Uh, was extremely difficult. And then on top of that, out of the 120 for one team, I had to initially only choose 12. And so, it, and, and again, this is not the only thing I do. Uh, I actually run um, all of the STEM programs at, at Valley Christian. I also run on the, the CEO of Quest. So there's a lot of other things we're doing. And so because we didn't have time to interview 120 kids, we had to actually put them in a, in a room uh, of five to six at a time and interview all of them together. And I can't imagine 
how nerve wracking it must have been for the kids. Because I, if I was applying for a job and then I get in a room with five other applicants applying for the same job, it would be pretty nerve wracking. So it, because we had so little time, I literally would be you know, rifling off questions across the five. They get to hear what the other person's answer was wow. and they try to one up the other, but it's amazing. Um, I, I even looking through the resumes of these kids, um, I, you know, when I was in high school, I don't think I even did a tenth of what they had already accomplished by the time they were freshmen in high school. Um, and we even have a, a good cohort of junior high kids because, as you know, it, a lot of these X-Prize competitions, they're not a one-year competition. They go two, three years. And so I can't, I can't just have juniors um, or even sophomores because they're, that have graduated and left. So it's the one problem that most probably other teams don't have is that we lose team members every year um, to college. Yeah. And so, but what that does is it opens up an opportunity for us to involve other kids. So when, when a, a cohort of seniors graduate, they, they uh, leave open a slot for leaders and, and other members. And then we promote uh, kids that have been quote unquote following. So what happens is the 120 applicants or more, because um, now we, we, we have a similar applicant pool for the rainforest. Uh, so now you're thinking, you know, we have 200 to 300 potential uh, kids that, that, you know, well, at least 200 that got to know, which is really heartbreaking. So what I did was I converted them into what was called a follower. So everybody got a follower account um, into our online teams infrastructure. So they can actually follow the meetings, uh, join in on the video conference calls, watch the chats, but they do it as a follower, not actually um, um, inputting and contributing, but they can follow the project along. And then we actually promote from the follower pool, the kids that have uh, showed interest, stayed on, and then we promote them onto the team. So with that promotion has already happened uh, over the last three or four months. So that's kind of the ongoing process. And now we're actually expanding the follower pool of kids beyond the one school. And now we're having applicants coming in from London and Asia and whatnot that will start joining the team as well. It's an amazing process. Um, and not many teams, you're right, not many teams have to worry about their, their team members graduating and moving on. <laughs> that's uh, that's got to be a real challenge because uh, I, I was going to ask how many of the people on this team are still going to be available when the X Prize gets to uh, the ANA Avatar Prize gets to the finals in two years. What's, what's interesting is the, the seniors that are graduating were mostly all the team's leads and sub team leads. And so their goal when they're a senior is to train and, and uh, identify their replacements. And so at towards the end of the end of the school cycle, we actually have a nomination process where they nominate and vote in um, new um, uh, leaders. So we already have a new set of leaders already uh, appointed and assigned uh, that will take over the, the emptying slots. It's a great system. Yeah, that's a really great system. It feeds into itself and it gives the students experience also of training, working and interacting with what, if, I mean, there are fellow students, but essentially, you know, you know, maybe perhaps more of a workplace term, their colleagues. So. They have that experience of interpersonal relationships, working with, with others, and you know, moving that group toward a shared goal, which is really awesome. So I want to take a step back, and I know Jennifer, you were an applicant in this process, getting onto the Avatar X Prize team. You know, Danny mentioned that there may have been some um, a little bit of competitiveness in the interview room, or maybe some nerves. What was your experience when you were being uh, interviewed as an applicant? Yeah, at the beginning, it was definitely a bit nerve-wracking <laughs> just to see it, like Mr. Kim and then the other mentors and teachers firing away at questions. But then <laughs> at the same time, like all of the students, I didn't feel it was very competitive, but more like each student was kind of giving their own story or mm -hmm. giving their own experience. And it was interesting to hear um, what the other students had to offer and um, their past experience working in either like software or electrical, just engineering in general. Yeah, that's really great. Well, it's great to hear that you, you know, steely nerves did not have too much of a of concern when you were going in on those interviews, but I can tell you're very capable and it's a, it's a clear choice that you were, uh, that you were brought onto the team as well. So you were just applying to the team, right? You didn't actually apply to become the vision systems, uh, 
project manager. Is that right? Yeah. It was just um, an application. So you either choose to apply for Avatar or Rainforest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and what drew you to Avatar versus Rainforest? I know they're a little bit separate as far as the timelines go. Rainforest is pretty new. Um, did you have any thoughts about jumping over to the Rainforest X Prize? Um, actually, in the beginning, what drew, drove me to Avatar is basically like just, I don't know, I'm personally more interested in physical like robotics, like um, robotic systems than Avatar than Rainforest, which is a bit more based on like ecosystems. Um, but another aspect, I guess, was the timeline, as you said, like Avatar um, ends closer to my graduation date than Rainforest. So yeah. I would like to be like more um, involved in the entire process rather than being involved in it, um, having to leave um, one year prior to the deadline. Right. Yeah, thoughtful yeah, approach. Sorry, Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, there's kind of like um, a friendly rivalry between the Rainforest and Avatar X Prize teams. Um, the Rainforest people like to brag that we had, I think, like five times as many applicants or something. And the Avatar people like to brag that um, their challenge is much greater because they're stepping in as um, one of the uh, latest teams, whereas the Rainforest people have much more time. So there's kind, of, there's kind of like that kind of like friendly rivalry between the two. So yeah, I think we were one of the last teams to uh, apply for the Avatar. Uh, we actually missed the first summit um, and we were the last entries before it closed. I think, if I remember, it, it, we applied a day or two before it closed. And what's funny is uh, on the Rainforest, we were the first team to register and apply. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, you learn from that, uh, from jumping in on the Avatar X Prize. you know, we're ready for this. Now it's time to get ourselves into the door. And, uh, you know, you, you really jumped into the Rainforest X Prize, which is excellent. Yeah, we're excited. I mean, just to, on a side note, it's amazing to have a returning group. You know, I think the students change themselves, but the overall spirit of the team remains as far as, you know, who is actually competing and working toward the systems. So uh, being this year third, X Prize competition and now running two concurrently, you know that is that is uh, quite a feat. So after your Danny, after your success in the Ocean Discovery X Prize, you know, did you imagine yourself doing more of these? What was your you know, how did this come to be where you now now you're running two at once? Um, did you envision it like this, or did it just sort of happen because of the spirit of the teams? Um, to be honest, when we entered the Ocean Discovery X Prize, uh, I had I had considered that we would have almost zero chance of winning. Um, that it would just be an education process, and mm -hmm. that I remember even telling my team, "Let's just try to get as far along as possible, um, and that'll be the big win for us." And then, obviously, years later, we're on stage and we we win the X Prize, and now I'm thinking, you know, we need to share this experience with more students. Uh, that's really was my first thought is, uh, you know, the seven, eight kids that, that, you know, lasted throughout, we had actually 20 kids in the beginning and, and, you know, either people matriculated or, 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 or went on to other things, but seven core kids stayed on the whole, whole all, all the way through. And the, the life changing experience and learning experience uh, for them was, was off the charts. I, I think it's beyond anything they could have learned in, in high school, or junior high. So the goal was at that point is just how can we bring this experience and learning and not that we have to win, but it was really that process of going through that competition that was the, the real learning part and how can we bring that to more kids and that's kind of, that's, that's really what the genesis of, of the way we're now presenting and, and, and uh, signing up and, and running these XPRIZE teams uh, came from. Yeah, no, I love that the, the spirit of bringing in other students. Uh, is really crucial, especially after having success and working with a team to bring that to to reality. Um, you know, that's it's fantastic. What a, what an excellent way to transition into having more student involvement. And speaking of which, you'd shared some images with us that I want to bring up now as sort of a, you know, thinking about other students on the team. Uh, maybe we can talk about who this, uh, this engineer is, what he's working on, um, get a view into some of the other work, especially he looks like he's at home. Um, so working on some of these technical components. So maybe Mihir or Jennifer, you can talk about uh, who this classmate of yours is. 
Yeah, so this is Randy Tran. Um, he's involved in the um, Haptics subteam. Um, so he is working on developing a solenoid uh, system that will help to um, give a sense of feeling to the operator in their like haptic suit. So what he's developing right now is an Arduino that will um, control a solenoid through, um, so yeah, an Arduino that'll control a solenoid. So I was working with him on this remotely uh, because uh, he was at home and so like this is in his home and so he, was here, he had these uh, components at home. So I was actually like on a virtual call with him and kind of um, he, like there's kind of like this loop of like, I would ask him something and he would report and then I would like tell him like, okay, try changing this and he would report, okay, then this happens. So it was kind of mm -hmm. like, um, it was kind of, uh, it was difficult, but it was also kind of fun to yeah. um, kind of do that remotely. Yeah, I can imagine that's difficult. Uh, you know, having, I, we've all been doing remote work for the last six, seven months now. So I can imagine that the back and forth of, you know, doing that, even just working on a, you know, a document, you know, editing, but imagine, you know, working through technical issues on this type of board here um, makes it even more of a challenge when you're working at it remotely. And that's true of a lot of our teams. Everyone is sort of stuck in their own locations. Some have the opportunity to meet in person uh, from a safe distance and work together within the labs. Um, but hats off to you to, for making this extra effort to make sure that you're collaborating with others. It was also challenging because um, not all team members have a wide inventory of parts at home. Like, for instance, like I was asking um, Randy, like, do you have like, um, I think I think it was like, do you have like a voltage regulator or a diode or there was some component that um, he needed. And so he, he looked around for it um, and he couldn't find it. So we actually had to come up with makeshift um, circuits to simulate those other components, which um, he didn't have. So we kind of had to jerry-rig things a little bit based on the resources that um, our team members had available to them at home versus in school um, where we had um, almost all of the facilities and components which we would need. Yeah. Yeah. So really just having to adapt to that, that entire situation. Yeah. Uh, bringing over to another one. Uh, who is this that's, that's working on this, this design sketch? So this is um, Avia. She's working on a, um, actually in this picture, I can't specifically tell, but like what she generally does is like she works on design sketches for um, various systems like the uh, vision system headset or the robotic um, arm. So she's developing kind of like a first um, kind of like image concept of what our manipulator um, or, or whichever system would look like um, from which we can uh, further develop technical drawings and engineering plans, which we can later translate into uh, eventually into CAD and then into a full prototype. So it kind of starts out with um, a, it, it starts out with like a general idea of, okay, this is what we kind of want to do. And then um, team members like Avia will put that down into more, into a more fleshed out kind of visual depiction. So we can kind of determine uh, how would this, um, fit in with our, uh, with the rest of our system, like how would, um, especially as like a systems, um, especially from a systems engineering standpoint, how would these um, different subsystems integrate um, and not have um, conflicts when we try to put them together. And, and so um, that's one of the, and so this is one of the pictures from the summer intensive. So you can see there's people in the background, um, they're all wearing masks and they're like six feet apart and everything. So Mm -hmm. uh, all, of the, all of the desks are also, act, the, the desks, uh, which you see, um, are supposed to be like um, full size desks, but apparently, um, like we, we came in and we found that these desks, which we had been using in the school year, had actually been cut in half and had additional legs attached to them. So that was an interesting surprise. Huh. Um, but uh, yeah, that, that is, um, so this is from the summer intensive and um, everyone's kind of working in their own little isolated pockets for safety in these um, half size desks. Yeah. Sounds like it was well thought out. Yeah, we, we, we did not know that um, <laughs> the desks would be um, cut in half, but that was helpful as far as socially distancing. 
Yeah, I can imagine. There's one other thing that I wanted to bring up here, which Mahir, you shared, and it's an interesting um, demonstration of kind of the motion capturing system that you're using. I'm gonna play this, um, but I wonder maybe after you can talk to it. Hi, I'm going to be demonstrating the Lean Motion controller. Uh, so this is the controller. It's built around an infrared sensor. And you can see when I place my hand over it, a 3D model of the hand appears on the screen and it tracks each of the um, individual joints. Uh, I can do, so. this supports two hands as well. And so it supports the movement of the hands, the, uh, what the hands are doing. So you can kind of see, this is, I'm running a diagnostic application right now that just shows uh, a model of what the hands are doing. I can also create uh, applications using an SDK that have access to this uh, data that's being generated. Uh, so this is an example of a third party uh, piano playing application. So you can see my um, hands appear on the piano and I can actually play notes. So I'm not playing anything in particular here, but I can use my hands to play notes on this virtual keyboard. So Mihir, how are you involving this system into the overall you know, avatar solution that you're, that you're working on? Is this something that you think you'll actually integrate or do you think it's something that, uh, yeah, that so it, yeah, so it's um, a lot of our uh, work has already gone through several revisions. Um, the Leap Motion Controller, which we demonstrated here, was one of our initial ideas for how we would kind of have a visual um, localization of where the hands would be and how the hands would um, move for, for the operator so we could send that data over to the avatar. Um, what we're thinking of now is having haptic gloves um, on, the, uh, uh, on the operator's hands with piezo resistive uh, sensors to detect the um, bending and extension and contraction of the hands. Uh, potentially coupled with this sensor that'll provide the relative position of the hands. So we kind of have, if you notice in that, in that demonstration of the piano playing application, um, I wasn't able to really play any specific notes because of the resolution was not high enough to where I could actually hit individual notes. Like I had to kind of, it kind of played like multiple notes at the same time. So for the high resolution um, uh, haptic feedback, we're thinking of developing haptic gloves um, with, uh, tactile sensors that can detect the movement of the hands and for, but for positioning of the hands, like where they are in space, we can use uh, this because this sensor that's shown in the video uses like infrared to determine the position of the hand. So we can use that for position determination and um, for the joint movement, we can use uh, the haptic gloves. And just to kind of go off what Mihir said, um, actually one of the first prototypes for our team was a avatar that could play remotely um, musical instruments because the ability to like play piano or clarinet or whatever instrument actually means that the technology also has the agility required to actually play and emotionally express a musical piece. And that can be used to um, do practically anything from like emergencies to nursing to remote surgery. So that's one of the initial prototypes um, that we're thinking of. And it's interesting how far we've like evolved our idea to this um, current avatar system. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I, I think it's really um, important that you think about the emotional components of this because what we're trying to do, of course, with this competition is connect people. And you've got to connect people through that communication and that emotional component. So um, I could even see your, your avatar solution being a way for someone to come in and teach piano to someone and to uh, really you know, evoke some emotional responses from uh, the person at the remote location. So the, the dovetail on that, um, uh, we actually took applicants and we specifically um, advertised this into our music and conservatory group. And so uh, yeah, several of the awesome. applicants were cellists, pianists, and, and, and uh, people learning music theory. Uh, and so we have a mix of both engineers as well as music performers who know 
the concept of, of, of bringing out that emotion of music and trying to translate that across. So that was actually one of the interesting parts about this particular team. Um, it's a good mix of both engineering and uh, conservatory students. And, and art. I mean, I, I saw the engineering drawings that the one team member mm -hmm, was art. making. And, and I actually did have a question for you um, about whether it was just STEM or STEAM. And it sounds like you do uh, bring in a really diverse group of, of talented students to work on these things. And it's that kind of diversity that gives the new ideas. And I, I expect to see a lot of really cool new ideas come out of uh, both these fresh young minds and the fact that you're mm -hmm. mixing all of these uh, talents together. Yeah, actually, we have a third team that's not associated with the next Paris competition, but it drew out of the fact that we have so many creative kids. I created a third team called the X Prize Storytellers, and these are the kids that actually are artistically inclined, and so they're actually doing our website, doing our social media, but also um, you know looking at promoting the documentary, doing filming. Um, and so they're doing a lot of the creative pieces above and beyond just their team, but now applying the fact that, hey, we're all together, we're creative, let's, let's do something with that creativity. And so there's actually a third team that actually is thriving on its own, uh, which is just our storytellers team that, that's looking at telling the story. Um, as you know, the telling the story is, is so important. Um, you know, we, we had a documentary created uh, about our ocean discovery team. And it's, it's being able to tell that story in, in an engaging manner that, that really to engage more students uh, that weren't even involved. And so the part uh, of the storyteller team is to tell the story of each XPRIZE team as, it's, as they're going along. Well, we're really interested in seeing how that turns out. And that's, that's just brilliant. You've got another whole group that are totally involved with their own special talents. And, and then you're getting documentation too. So um, expect to see some of that documentation at film festivals. Yes. Yeah, we'll look forward to that for sure. So I, I have a question just about where the stage of your developments for Mahir and Jennifer. So what, what are the next steps for the integration of all the various subsystems that you're working on now? The competition is continuing on. Uh, there's some time before the next submission and the semifinals are next year. Um, so what are the what are the top priorities that are coming up next for those technical subsystems? Yeah, so each subsystem was able to get a lot of prototyping work done during the summer intensive. Um, some, some subsystems determined areas in which they need to scrap certain designs or revise certain um, models. So right now, what each subsystem is trying to do is to develop um, their specific prototype uh, while keeping in mind the integration requirements that eventually it'll have to be able to connect to all the other subsystems in a certain manner and stay within uh, the power budget, mechanical constraints, et cetera, S uh, safety requirements as well, of course. So um, the next step for each subsystem is to um, develop a functioning prototype of their, uh, of their part. And then after that, we'll um, integrate them together into a cohesive whole prototype um, from which we'll be in a position to determine um, what the next steps for developing a test scenario would be. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yeah, Jennifer, being a project manager for specifically the vision subsystem, uh, what's coming next for, for your team? You know, similarly, what me here said, yeah, we, there's a prototype coming, but what kind of uh, challenges are you working on now that, you're, that your team is, is making solutions for? Yeah, so right now, I guess, because we're all in social distancing, there's no way to come together. Um, but it's funny because um, different members of our team actually have different components that we brought home from school or one of the team members delivered to us, actually. Mm -hmm. So right now, like, for example, I have with me one of the cameras, the Z cameras, and then someone else has the headset that they're currently working on. So then what I'm basically doing right now is um, installing all the necessary software and starting the code for um, to actually be able to use this camera and um, someone else is working on getting the 3D motion or the three directional motion of the headset and integrating that with actuators to be able to move the camera on a mount. Um, so that is our next steps. And um, after we figure out internally 
um, how these different components come together, then we, we have to actually um, talk with control system and the other different systems to be able to um, stream this data back and forth between the operator and the avatar. And um, I guess the summer intensive was actually very helpful in that the different systems would come together and um, kind of talk through how we'll integrate the system, even though um, we're each at home and working on a different component separately. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's quite the challenge to try and do the integration when, when you can't plug your cables into each other. <laughs> you know, it's really, um, software can only do so much. And, uh, you know, I really applaud you guys taking on this challenge in, in the kind of world we're living in today. But I think you're going to come up with some solutions that can really take that kind of collaboration and take it to where it needs to be in the in whatever world we end up with in a year or so. So, you know, kudos to you guys for uh, doing the work, you students, and for Danny and Stephen for leading the, the charge in this um, brave new world. Yeah, I echo that. Uh, we're just almost at the end of our hour here, but I do want to ask one final question to everyone. Maybe we'll start with Jennifer on this. Um, you know, aside from winning a, the grand prize, part of the prize, as you've done in past competitions, what do you see as success in this competition as you move forward? Um, in terms of, I guess, personal growth, definitely um, learning all of these like different from electrical to software, um, these different skills that um, I'll need in the future for sure. And um, in terms of actually the avatar, being able to develop something that can really help um, others in remote locations, whether it's like in emergencies or just uh, in places that um, need more um, people, need more assistance, being able to develop technology that can help the world. Yeah. That's great. Me here? Yeah, I think, um, you know, so going off of that, I think success would, one part of success is definitely developing a functional avatar system. Uh, but uh, the other part of success would be that uh, the student-led team um, is able to develop their engineering and interpersonal uh, teamwork skills and is able to um, learn how to gain exposure to how to operate in like a real world engineering environment and to compete at a level which is not typically expected of um, junior high and high school students. So if uh, people gain um, that kind of learning, then that would be another form of success for us. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. How about Steven? What do you think about this? Yeah, no, it's um, just like with the Shell Ocean Discovery X Prize, one of our core objectives is to now is to leverage, you know, the inspiration of an of an X Prize um, to develop an ongoing educational program. So we, with the Shell Ocean Discovery X Prize, we ended up developing our own Ocean Discovery program that, uh, and then and uh, that that it opens up opportunities for students to be involved in um, in in the ocean and with uh, to learn about ocean engineering in in ways that were never before possible. Um, in just this last week during our summer summer program, we had students from around the world uh, teleoperating up to uh, nine or ten R underwater ROVs simultaneously um, and, and competing in different little uh, games or projects. Wow. And so, um, um, which I which I believe is the first time that's ever been done before. Um, so. The X Prize is, is is very inspirational to us. Um, we use, I mean, they are, you know, they're they're always such grand challenges. So we we always want to look beyond the X Prize and look for ways that we could leverage this to to do these extreme STEM programs and and that that are open to all students, not just students of Valley Christian. Yeah, that's and I think it's ditto for me. <laughs> so I think that it. The, for us, the the the, um, the success is already here because so you can see it from um, here and Jennifer. Um, they're 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 a small sampling of of what the engagement uh, is is really driving and doing for the students. Uh, and so to see that you know winning is just icing on the cake. 
Yeah, well, we couldn't agree more about just the successes of the team integration, bringing students into the mix and showcasing that, that students or people of all ages can, can demonstrate skills on, on this level of uh, engineering and, com and competing. So we applaud you, the students, for, for taking on this challenge and, and really driving it forward. And of course, the, uh, the team mentors and coordinators for, for steering that and making sure that they're guided down that path, which is it's really inspiring to know that, that students have opportunities at this age to really dive into to these challenges and technical problems. So everyone, we are out of time for today's session. So on behalf of the Avatar X Prize, I want to thank Danny, Stephen, Mihir, and Jennifer for joining us today. And Jackie, we appreciate you jumping on as well for the Avatar X Prize. It's been a real pleasure speaking with you all and uh, getting the opportunity to take a closer look at your systems, the technology that you're building and working on integrating, and learning more about how your team's structure is feeding itself and making sure that these developments are sustained. This is really exciting and we're looking forward to seeing what comes next from Avatar Quest. So everyone, this has been the fourth in a series of Meet the Teams webinars. If you have any questions about the Meet the Team series, you're welcome to email us at avatar at xprize.org to uh, learn more about the, uh, the, what's coming next for the Avatar X Prize. We do expect to have uh, more Meet the Team sessions coming up. Uh, in August, so watch out for more information on those sessions soon. Uh, until then, we are wishing you all well from Los Angeles and hope you're staying safe and healthy. Hope you enjoy the rest of your mornings, afternoons, and evenings, and take care. Thank you. Bye, everybody. <laughs>